Yo guys, what's going on? Robert Warshak here, and we are day one of the new expansion. Just streamed for like 17, 18 hours. We got to play a lot of different decks. We played against a lot of different decks, and these are the standout decks of today. What are basically the best performing decks to come up? We've got some new decks with some new cards, and then of course I'll include some decks with some just no new cards. If you don't have, or just didn't buy the bundles, you can still do really well with new stuff, and you can still do really well with some of the previous stuff. So first deck is going to be the Beast Hunter. This deck is very serious, kills you very fast, and there's a quite a few very key cards that are really really good first one being the jungle gym this card's insane we played during the theory crafting event our hunter deck was like our best deck this card two mana three durability deal one damage to a random enemy repeat for each friendly beast this is really good in combination with stuff like the remote control which gives you stuff the ball of spiders saddle up along with the rc rampage i think this is kind of the key card in the deck that makes it really good and depending on how many minions you have or don't have is how many dudes you summon and then the ones that can't fit give others plus one plus one so you don't have any minions get a board full of one ones that you can use with jungle you can buff with saddle up if you don't have a huge board you get buffed dogs and you already have a board so you can use even more stuff you also have the new hemet which after a friendly beast dies, get a random legendary beast from the past. It costs two less. So you have a ton of tokens in this deck. So you're able to definitely create a lot of beasts from the past. This guy is just the Titans, a ton of damage. We also have the painted, which is battle cry. Give other friendly beast minions bonus effects, which is like wind fury, divine shield, taunt, lifesteal, poisonous. You have a build full of one ones, two twos, three threes, giving them extra. Effect. It's basically like Megasaur in like old Murloc uh, Paladin. If you remember that guy, instead of discovering, you just get what you each one gets a random one but you only spend you know two mana for a three two instead of a five mana five four so you also have the observer which after you summon a minion with more attack than this give all friendly minions plus one attack which is really sick with stuffs like the patchwork pals get all three animal companions they cost one less which means you can get leoc and huffer and you're just like buffing everything they only cost two mana because you already spent two mana to reduce them by one so this particular hunter decks was hat tricks he did really really well with it he's a hunter like main if there's a hunter deck that i trust it's going to be from that guy and if he's running this and he says that uh he went 20 and i think two with it and then post the stats with it well you know what that's the hunter deck that we're going to show because the guy is the hunter main moving on to a rogue deck that i thoroughly enjoy we played probably the most of this rogue deck than any other deck yesterday and that's going to be the spectral cutlass rogue so this is a four mana two two weapon life steal whenever you play a card from another class gain one durability however we have stuff like the deadly poisons and we have stuff like the valira's gift which gets more deadly poisons which normally wouldn't be that many deadly poisons you know you run four of them that's still plus eight attack plus a two it's a 10 attack weapon but that's still not good enough so we run the new sonia card after you play a one cost card get a copy of it that costs a zero which means every time we play deadly poison with her out we get another zero mana deadly poison every time we play valira's gift we get another valira's gift but then we choose deadly poison from valira's gift and then get another deadly poison so each valira's gift is technically two more deadly poisons and each two deadly poisons is actually four deadly poisons so we've gotten weapons to well over plus 20 attack it has life steal Every time you play a card from another class, you get a durability. So that's why we run a bunch of cards that discover cards from other classes like Thistle T. We have Mixtape. We have Swashbuckler. We've got the Might. We've got the Plague. We've got the Windblade. And then because we're playing cards from other classes, of course, we run Tess Greymane. A lot of you may be asking, where's the new pirate? The like five mana, four five four or four three that makes the next card cost three less that doesn't really fit in this deck there's also a bug with that card with sonya right now and i'm not trying to abuse bugs in hearthstone however leaning towards that particular pirate package is also good in itself we run two raiding parties even though we only run two weapons drawing the weapon is the most important thing in this deck so guaranteeing we're playing the weapon on turn four or five with two raiding parties and two weapons kind of guarantees that. Also, we do run, again, a decent amount of pirates, so we get to draw those. All of our pirates generate cards from other classes, which synergize with the weapon. Super nice, very fun deck. The only problem is people running Viper in their deck. I encountered, of course, when you queue a deck like this, you're going to queue into Control Warrior, and that warrior is going to be running two Vipers. I don't know who these people are, but they do exist, and Hearthstone will match you against them. So just be careful. The deck's really good against anybody who's not playing Viper. All right, moving down to Rainbow Death Knight. All right, this deck got a ton better. I, I just don't know 
how, but Rainbow Death Knight is in a really, really good spot right now in regards to new cards that it's playing. It's running the Rainbow Seamstress, which is a 3-mana three 3-3 three, three Lifesteal, Reborn, and Rush. Very, very solid card. It got Dr. Stitches, which is really good. Very sticky card. Most of the time, you're going to be able to get some pretty good stuff out of this guy, whether it's the 5-mana cards or the 3-mana cards. It got the Headless Horseman, which... Kills the highest attack of the enemy. Then you get a three damage hero power. And then when you draw the head, you then discover undead cards, which are really good. And then it, of course, also runs pretty much the same package it has before. So it didn't get too much, but it got enough to make it really good. And all the really good decks got a little bit worse. So this was already making its way into a good deck prior to this expansion. But with losing three sets, this gaining a new hero card amongst the other legendary it just kind of made Rainbow DK really good now. So for those of you who really enjoy the Necrotic Explosion, I've been hit by this by like 20 plus damage multiple games in a row. And uh, that's pretty good. So for those of you Rainbow DK enjoyers, it is your time. However, taking a look at another DK deck, that's going to be the buff DK deck. I ran the Double Blood Plague. This was my best performing deck in the Theory Crafting event alongside Hunter. A couple new cards in this deck that are just really, really good is the Lesser Spellstone, which gives the Undead in your hand plus one, plus one, and you can keep upgrading this to plus three, plus three. You have the zombie tank, which again, it benefits from buffs, but what's important is you spend five corpses and then it summons a copy. So if this card's like a 1110, you're going to make two 1110s for two mana. It's pretty good. Another one is going to be the Quill Bore. You buff this guy at the end of your turn. Uh, it does damage based on its attack, randomly split among enemy minions. You buff this guy up, and then you start hitting your opponent for large quantity damage at the end of the turns. Of course, you run the Stitches and the new Headless Horseman card, and then we run Zilliax with the Divine Shield, Taunt, Lifesteal, and Rush, and then cost one less for each minion in play, and the reason we picked that is because we run, like, the crop rotation. We run a lot of stuff to put a lot of minions on boards, so because of that, playing out the Zilliax for really cheap is pretty nice. Oh, I forgot the Puppeteer. A new buff card. It is the 5-mana 2-6 Taunt, Miniaturized, Taunt, Death Rattle, Give, Undead in your hand, plus 2, plus 2, so... Really, really good. Really, really good. Buff DK is uh, very popular right now, and there is a lot of people playing it. Moving to the deck we hit Legend with is Chadgar Mage. Out of all the decks we play, I'm not sure how we did it, but Chadgar Mage was the deck that we hit Legend with this month. And this guy is a 6-mana 5-5 five, five battle cry equip is 0-6 Wisdom Ball that casts helpful mage spells. So, problem. It could cast Flame Strike, cast Blizzard, Fireball, Arcane Intellect, Counter Spell, Ice Barrier, Mirror Entity. There's a lot of things that this guy can cast in each situation, and it won't. It's not like Zephyrus where it picks the best one every turn. He just plays one that's helpful. So it's like, you know, if five of them work in the situation, it'll just pick one of the five. You know what I'm saying? So while he is cool and he sometimes is sick, don't depend on him to cast blizzard if your opponent has seven minions out sometimes he fireballs a one one so just be careful about the chad gar caligos super fun card i can't play a mage deck without our boy caligos we of course play the titan as well because it's more of a tempo oriented deck we play all of like the rainbowy mage stuff so we run Civ because she's just good in general wisdom because it benefits from all the random uh, rainbow mage cards inquisitive creation one star power I play a new card, the Promoter. Uh, it's a 3-mana three 3-2 three, Death Rattle. Reduce the cost of two spells in your hand by one. This is really, really good, whether it lands on Void Scripture, Primordial Glyph, Amphitize Magnitude, any sort of damaging spell. Uh, it can land on the Molten Runes. I mean, the discounts are really sick. Uh, this ended up being a really, really strong card for me. I think a lot of the key spots in Mage, though, while we this deck doesn't particularly run a ton of the new cards, it does take advantage of some, but Mage just has a habit of creating new cards, whether it's from Discovery of Magic, whether you're playing Maxitude, Primordial Glyph, Void Scripture, Molten Rune, all of these cards are generating more cards, which those cards that it's generating are new cards. You know what I'm saying? So you're, you're playing strong cards that are generating some new stuff, so... This is the deck we hit Legend with. Did really well for me. I doubt you'll see anybody else on ladder playing it, but I figured I'd include the deck that we hit Legend with with like a 70 or 80% win rate. Moving to the Paladin deck you're going to see a lot on ladder. That's going to be the Aura Paladin. So Paladin's got a couple more auras, especially the seven mana one at the end of your turn. Summon a random six cost minion. It lasts three turns. But what's important is we got a Aura Extending card 
the Cardboard Golem, which is a 4-mana 4-4 four, four battle cry. Increase the duration of auras in your hand, deck, and battlefield by 1, which is everywhere. So, this guy, really, really good, and it extends the life of, again, all of your auras, which we have Resistance Aura. Your opponent's spells cost 1 more, last 2 enemy turns. We have the Adapt Aura, which your leftmost minion has plus 3 attack and life steal. Really, really good. We have the Crusader Aura, which, of course, whenever a friendly minion attacks, give it plus two, plus one. And then we, of course, have the last one, which is the new uh, Crafter's Aura. Besides that, some new cards in the deck is the Safe Pilot. Super fun card. Six mana, four, two, Rush. Also damages the minions next to whoever this attacks, so it's a cleave. And it's Death Rattle deal two damage to all enemies. What's really, really good about Safe is you combined her with either Crusader or the Dep. And all of a sudden, she's a 7 attack minion that has cleave, so she can heal for 21, and then she does 2 damage to everybody. So, really, really good card in this particular deck. Another really good card in this expansion, probably one of the best, is the Tigress Plushie. It's a 3 mana, 3, 2 beast, miniaturized, rush, lifesteal, divine shield. Again, combining this card with any aura on the board, when you attack with it, you're full healing. I mean, it's just crazy. This card is so good. I wouldn't be surprised if it goes to four mana. Another really good card is the Trinket, the three mana, two, three battle cry draw, a divine shield minion, and an aura. Of course, we're going to divine shield minions and auras. Drawing them for three mana, it's a two, three is really good because it leads us right into the four mana aura. So Paladin got quite a few new cards for the aura kit. Feels a lot different than the Libram Paladin kit. So it's not that bad, but it is, again, a much easier deck than some of the other decks that we've covered. You just play your auras, play your minions and attack. There's not really a lot going on there, but it was a fun. It was an easy deck, very beginner friendly, and it really doesn't have that many legendaries. I think there is two in the whole deck, and one of them is part of the core set. So you actually just get safe pilot for free. So the only true legendary you need in the whole deck is the Titan. So very cheap deck, in my opinion, and it's really, really good for what it is. Very, very beginner friendly. Those are all of the new decks that have come out and that I've seen and that I have played and had some good experience with. Moving to some not new decks, but still extremely powerful decks is going to be the Plague Death Knight. So right now there is a lot of people playing Excavate Plague Death Knight. It is absolutely running over people trying to test the new decks because obviously if you have a deck that was almost tier one in the previous, you know, meta, and then we now have a new meta. People don't know what's going on, what's the best decks, everybody's testing stuff, and then you just have a deck that literally runs zero new cards in it. There's not a single new card in this entire deck. This is just a bunch of old cards, and they're all good. Uh, yeah, this deck just steamrolls people. So if you want an easy legend or you want to take advantage of people playing the new cards, that's what people are doing with this deck. And they, I fought, it was like 50% Plague DK on my way to legend this time. So it's rough, but if you don't have the new cards, really good deck at the moment. And then... Unfortunately, we have Sludge Warlock. This is, again, was a tier 1, tier S almost deck. And before it got nerfed, and even with it being nerfed, it's still super popular. I fought this about 20% of the time on the way to Legend yesterday on day 1 of the new expansion. This deck, again, has zero new cards in it. And apparently a lot of people don't have any of the new cards because these two decks combined together were about 60-70% to 70 of all the decks that I faced yesterday in about a 17-hour stream. So if you have new cards, cool. Check out those decks. If you don't have any new cards and you just want to win a lot, these uh, these the, these last two decks are for you. So with that, are there any crazy cool decks that are standing out to you? Feel free to leave that in the comment section below or the Discord where we have a bunch of people sharing their Hearthstone decks all the time and that's where I pull from for some of my deck creations. And of course... As always, thank you guys for watching. I'm Rob Warshak, and happy whatever the hell day it is.